whenever you're ready, can you tell me what you've built? So we've made a Zelda-like game engine that has a lot of the same functionalities as the original game. And we've made a small level to demo all of the functionality. So we'd like you to try out the level. Okay. And uh, just play through it a little bit. Okay, sounds good. So I'll play a little and then I'll, I can ask you about yes. how it works. Yes, absolutely. Sounds good. So, WASD to move. L to interact, K to fight, C to respawn. So, press L to start. Okay, so I can move around. Monsters ahead. Find a weapon. Okay, let's go up here. Press L to move the boulder. Sound effects for everything. Okay, there's a weapon. So now I can swing my sword. K to attack. Okay. Okay. So we go down here, back through this room. These are definitely following me. No! Okay, <laughs> press C to try. Okay. So I'm just back where I was. Okay, let's see what this guy has to say. Pay me 50 gems and I'll let you pass. Okay. Good lord. Here. Saw a puzzle ahead for treasure. Okay. Oh gosh. So I moved these bricks around to get through. Yes. So. Okay. You can't push bricks through each other. So I can move a brick like that. You might have to help me with this. So, <laughs> Should I leave and come back? Yes. Okay. So it resets the puzzle. So let's try again. So maybe you can help me do that. Yeah. So push the the middle one. Okay. Yes. And then you want to push the left and the right ones to the side. Okay. And then you want to push the middle one to the side. And then push the middle one up one. And then push the side ones out again. And then push the two next to the middle one up. Oh, I see. Okay. Yes. Here's a bunch of gems. And the big ones are worth 10 each. Oh, so I have enough to pay that guy? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I push middle one, push these to the side. Uh, it's not the same way out. So here oh. you can just push one of the side ones down, and then you can just push it through. Oh, I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's go find that guy. <laughs> and then the next room is sort of like a boss fight. So, L to interact. Thank you for the gems. <laughs> okay, he moves out of the way. The left, yeah. Okay, let me have bosses. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, you can try again with uh, full HP this time. Ah. Oh. Oh, awesome. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes, yes, 
Yes. Okay. And then we'll do it. <laughs> awesome. 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 Cool. I can take this. So that's. So there's a lot to talk about with that. <laughs> so. And there's background music playing the whole time. Let me just make sure I get that. Okay, so. Let's talk first of all about. I'm going to restart this so that we can look at it and refer to it. Um, so, this art, the tile art and such, um, is this all custom developed? Yeah, so I designed, I can actually show you all the art based on the original Zelda game and other video games in a Google Sheet. Um, and then we modified, I guess, the VGA setup for the 4-bit colors so that we would have more color options. And then I wrote a couple Python scripts to encode um, from the Google Sheet into like the format that we needed to play it in the game. So you, you developed every single game tile and asset in a Google Sheet. Yeah. <laughs> it's an unbelievable amount of work. Yeah. And then all of that got encoded as like a, a bitmap, essentially, that you could you could place yeah. wherever you wanted to on the screen? Yes. Okay. Um, and all the game layouts are designed in here as well. They're not all of them. A lot of them. A lot of them are. These are like the screens. So these are all the screens that we just wandered through. Yeah. How yeah. many screens are there total? There's nine. There's nine, nine but it's expandable to more. Okay. So nine is just for the quick demo of the showcase. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then how about the sounds? Because for every time I picked up an asset, every time I swung the sword, every time I interacted with an object, there was an associated sound effect. Um, how did you develop those sound effects? Sure. So I recorded those sounds myself, um, and then I developed a Python script to convert those wave files into arrays of values that we can send to the DAC. So um, every time a sound effect is triggered, a DMA sequence transfers uh, that full sound effect from Flash to the uh, serial output buffer. So all the sound effects are, are stored in Flash memory, and then when you want for one of them to occur, you initiate a DMA sequence so that it all just gets sent out to the speakers. Correct as opposed to the background music, which occurs in a timer interrupt, um, and that's where DDS is running constantly, um, and we're running just through an array of notes and note lengths, uh, so that happens constantly. So in addition to the, the sound effects, which are initiated by DMA sequences, you are also continuously synthesizing background music using direct digital synthesis? Correct, those are two distinct separate channels. Okay. And then the game engine itself. Can you talk a little bit about how this works? So um, there are sort of three parts to it. One is drawing the actual screen. And basically what happens is that uh, each of the tile designs as well as the level layouts are hard-coded in Flash. And the level layouts um, index into an array that points to uh, the tile designs and then it will scan through the level design and then find the value in flash and it will essentially just uh, mem copy the entire array into the VGA driver and um, that's uh, everything visually okay and then there is another sort of bit map that uh, handles collision detection so you bumping into a wall uh, is coded by a bitmap and the character has a sort of local area where they can't pass and it gets recalculated every time you move and then there's the actual game logic itself such as swinging the sword and hitbox detection and the hitbox detection is done on a rectangle so if a rectangle overlaps with another one um, it will or it will hit the enemy or you will get hit as well as colliding with any items. So it will uh, check the environment that you're in every time you move, and it will see if you're interacting with a heart or a coin and that sort of thing, and it will respond appropriately. And then there's the part of interacting. So whenever you interact 
it will uh, check what's in front of you and okay. then find what it needs to do. So this is done in a couple threads. So one thread is purely for input. It runs on the core, on uh, its own core. And then everything else is run on the second core. So okay. things like uh, graphing or uh, drawing the game as well as handling all the game logic uh, is done on its own core. Amazing. It's uh, a beautifully authentic recreation. And I'm noticing even little details like as I walk into the wall, he has a little walking motion. <laughs> Amazing. Um, anything else you want to mention about it? Um, that's everything. That's everything? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Thank you guys. That's really, really, really cool. Beautiful. Beautiful.